It seems that when it comes to Fallout, everyone is trying to resurrect the glory of past civilizations in the wake of the Great War, some even going so far as to try to rebuild the Roman Empire. Now, I'm not too sure how I feel about those kooks, but one thing the Romans were known for was their construction of the Insula, an all-in-one storefront and apartment block for Rome's less affluent citizens. Insulas, or insulae, housed a large portion of the population in ancient Rome, and were characterized by their use of progressively lighter and incidentally more flammable materials the higher from the ground they grew. Their shaky histories aside, I decided it would be good fun to do a Commonwealth Contractor video to see if we can build a wasteland equivalent to the insula using good old concrete for the lower levels, vault tech chambers for the mid-level, and lighter weight wood, tin, and glass on the top level. This is a variation on my tower build, so much of the concepts from building those structures can also be applied here. If you are interested in 2,000 year old high-rise technology, grab whatever tools you could scrounge out of the rubble and start mixing concrete as we jump right in. To start, you will need enough space for a 5x8 square foundation pad. I already constructed one here and I did have to do some underlayment work in order to make it work on this sloped hillside here at Nordhagen Beach. So that was a little bit of extra prep that I had to do for this site that I'm not going to show just because if you're doing it at a more level location like Starlight Drive-In for instance, you won't need to do all that extra work. So with our pad already laid and prepped, let's go ahead and start building. To start, we're going to enclose the back 5x5 five five floor squares in solid concrete walls, leaving a single doorway at the center of our wall facing the additional three floor pad deep section of our tower. Ordinarily, I don't bother filling in the corners of my tower builds, but for this site, it will be helpful and provide a cleaner aesthetic when we're done. So for this front facing wall, we're going to use the concrete pillars to fill in those gaps in the corners. Next, we're going to head outside and build out two more wall lengths and cap it with a pair of these semicircular wall pieces. These alcoves will serve as storefronts. We'll go ahead and fill in the roofs with these concrete ceilings, which I often don't use in my tower builds, but we don't need to worry so much about object collisions here because we're not going to be separating these alcoves into their own rooms, so we can go ahead and use the concrete ceilings for this section. We'll also use these concrete roofs to allow us to snap the semicircular floors to the ceilings, which are one of the few pieces that can serve both roles. Next, we'll build four 2x2 two two rooms in each of the four corners of the first floor. Just snap in three solid walls and one wall that has a door. And this first floor is now done. To start the next floor, go to the end of our hallways and snap a wall to the top of our existing wall and snap a floor to it so that we can snap a stairwell and once we're up here, we can essentially build a second floor that looks nearly identical to the first. The exception being that for this floor, we will use more windowed walls so that we can reduce the weight of our building. And we can repeat this step for the third floor, further increasing the number of windows. Essentially, this building is going to get lighter and lighter as we work our way up to reduce the amount of stress on the lower levels. I kind of screwed up, so I apologize that it looks a bit off, but after finishing the insula, I discovered a better way of implementing our vault tech floor and filling out our entryways. So some elements are already finished in the background, but don't worry, we'll get to constructing them. 
On our second floor, let's pull these walls above our entryway out and replace them with doorways. Next, we'll add a single wall length on each side, cap it off with the semicircular rounded pieces, and fill in this gap with another concrete pillar. Finish out the ceiling the same way we did on the level below, with one concrete square ceiling and two semicircular floors snapped to the ceiling. On the floor above, we will also replace the corner walls with doorways, but instead of a room, this floor will get a porch, so we'll use these handrails from the concrete set that are designed to snap to the top of walls. Now let's go ahead and move up to our vault tech floor. So we'll go ahead and build out a concrete floor above our third floor to kind of serve as a ceiling and sealant for our existing floor because we don't want any air gaps that will be caused by these semi-rounded edges of the vault tech build set. Now vault tech will not snap to concrete, but a great way to get you started is to pull a floor square out and replace it with one of these vault tech supports, which will allow you to snap a layer of vault tech floors to the top of this support. This will give you the proper alignment with the rest of our structure and height. For this build, I'm just going to go with the plain common room, but you can go with whatever blows your hair back. They all look the same on the outside, they're just going to have different wallpapers or paints on the inside. We'll start with the inside hallways, taking up the center square and one square in each direction. Then we will snap these windowed end pieces to it. Next, we will need one more windowed piece to serve as a temporary guide to get the corners to snap right. Once we have our outside corners started, we can move or store our placeholder and fill the room in with three more corners, ensuring that one of them has a doorway cut out. We'll need to remember to use our guide piece to fill in behind the stairwell. I did neglect to fill in all of my hallway end pieces before building my room, so I did have to juggle a bit by storing some walls to allow my end piece and put them back when I was done. So if you remember to do all four hallway end caps first, then you will have a lot less trouble building the rest of your rooms. I'm going to leave this square out because we need an opening for a stairwell, and this top floor looks like a mess with gaps all over in the ceilings, so I wouldn't want to do all this work to get the vault tech set to snap right and still have this nasty gap filled mess as our top floor. You may also need to do a bit of juggling to allow a set of half squares or half width floor pieces to provide a small walkway. If you don't like the uneven floor, you can snap in an atrium floor which doesn't have a roof, but may require a bit more juggling. I hate working with vault tech pieces. Next, we'll build a temporary set of steps to get us to the top and we'll eyeball a barn floor here as best we can. There's no cheat to get perfect snapping, so you'll just want to make sure you're as close to perfect as you can get because this entire top floor is final appearance will depend on your precision with this single step. Next, build out the entire 5x5 floor plan for this section. Once that's done, remember to snap that temporary stairwell to one of the floor pieces here so that you can get up to this level without having to jump into it. Now it will still look like this floor is hovering above the vault tech floor, so by snapping these metal posts from the warehouse set to the bases of our barn level, we can basically make it look like the top floor is anchored into the vault tech floor below.
This will make it look like a far better integrated structure than it really is. Once that's done, we can terminate each of our center hallways with a windowed piece from the warehouse set, and by using a half-height barn wall followed by half-height warehouse windows, we can ensure that each of these top-level rooms has plenty of natural lighting coming from the corners. and we can cap each of these rooms with a peaked ceiling using the barn corner pieces and the hallways will just have a flat barn roof, giving a nice Roman aesthetic. And that's really it. You can furnish this structure as you see fit, with as many or as few beds as you like, whatever furniture you would prefer, outdoor dining or gardens in the entrance or in front of the entrance. I still feel like this structure is missing something, so if you have any ideas for how to make this structure seem more Roman, definitely let me know. If you have any plans to build this structure yourself, definitely let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear if this has given you any inspiration for your own settlement building. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end. Until next time, stay safe, and I hope to see you here next time on Grey Gaming.